Hello and welcome to Culture Vultures. I'm Sandy Fry, your host. Our creative director is Nancy Cole. And this is a program that examines arts and culture all around the Tampa Bay area. Several years ago, uh, while on a trip to New York, uh, I went to the Museum of Modern Art and got out and looked across the street at the Museum of Contemporary Craft. Uh, that's what it was called at that time. And I thought, well, I'll go over and take a look. It always had something interesting. And I'm glad I did because I saw the work of Josette Urso there. And I was delighted because I admire this particular artist because she's taken so many avenues that art offers an artist and she does it with purpose and intensity and success, I might add. Another reason I always recognize Josette Urso is because she's a Tampa native. She took her BFA and MFA from the University of South Florida and then she embarked on a career that has been altogether successful and productive. She's had many important and interesting grants and residences which have taken her around the world, literally. Uh, she has had solo exhibitions and has participated in group exhibitions which go from coast to coast and abroad. In New York, her art has been seen at the New York Public Library, the Bronx, Museum of Creative Arts, and the Drawing Center, among others, and in galleries, public institutions, etc. And now she can be seen in Tampa. Josette has an exhibition at 221 Gallery, which is part of the HCC College Campus on Dale Mabry. That's Hillsborough Community College. This is an, a beautiful little art gallery, which is sort of a wing off the library. And this exhibit, which is the drawings, it, the exhibit title is taking place. And it is ink drawings and one incredibly large drawing on vinyl. And I'm pleased to note that she's our guest today. Thank Welcome you so to much. Jeff. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. Well, I was, I was bowled over because you, uh, you used ink as a medium for the place you call home now, which is New York City. And I, I used to live in New York City, I lived in New Jersey too, but you, you got the density of, that sense of density of, of this city um, with a medium that seems so intimate, uh, the, just the ink drawing. And it's so successful because after you see that, you begin to see the small details. But I want to start with the huge site-specific vinyl work you have. It's seven and a half feet tall, it's 20 feet wide, and how did you do it? Well, when I, when I first saw the space, Kathy mm -hmm. Gibson, who's the curator at um, Gallery 221, invited me to, to, to the college to take a look at the gallery to see if I might have an idea about a right. project. And I saw this giant wall and I thought, first of all, immediately, I felt I would like to show drawings here. Something about the space just felt like the perfect, the perfect um, site for a drawing exhibition. Right. And drawings are, 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 are uh, 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 an important part of my practice, but, uh, but they don't always get seen. But the mm -hmm. drawings really help the paintings. They keep me very fresh and of the moment. But anyway, I saw this giant wall and I thought I'd love to do a dry, giant drawing. How might that happen? And I thought about possibilities of materials and vinyl is something about vinyl the idea of translating a drawing from the intimacy of the small scale ink onto the wall with vinyl seems perfect so what I did was I took one of my drawings I many times I have um, invitations to make drawings from various locations and it's interesting you mentioned the city because the city is so many different places if we you know if you're on the eighth floor or the 13th floor or the 38th floor it's a very different experience so anyway I had a series of drawings I'd made recently from a friend's 38th street it's actually on 38th street and on the 38th floor mm -hmm. looking down 6th avenue you could see the Empire State Building from bottom to top at that view so anyway I took some of the drawings I made at that particular from that site and um, I redrew um, using a pretty fine line on a piece of mylar. Most of my drawings are a little too large for a scanner. In order to use that vinyl laser cut, you need to, the, the drawing needs to fit on a scanner bed. So I redrew the drawing on, on a, a piece of mylar. Mm -hmm. We scanned it, um, vectorized it, which what is a computer mean? process of bringing it back into a kind of translatable 
um, geometry. And I worked with Chris Haynes from SignArt, um, who is a local fabricator. Wonderful. It was wonderful working with her. I mean, every, it was just so we really bounced off each other in terms of I would have this idea. And she's like, sure, we could figure that out. Um, so what happened, though, once the drawing was in the computer, um, it was laser cut on strips of vinyl. So the, the, the drawing is, is um, made on um, nine 27 foot wide strips wow. by seven and a half feet. And, and so basically, once the, the, the vinyl went through the printer, the, um, there was a very fine line of laser cutting, and I, I peeled out or what, what, what they call weeding, uh -huh. the negative space. Uh -huh. So it's still on. A, it's almost a little bit like hanging wallpaper. So it's, it's the, 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 the vinyl is still um, married to a piece of, of paper. Yeah. And, and then we, we, one by one, we, we hung it. You know, it was kind of interesting to watch it generate. But there's something interesting, too, about that. The, technology of the process of laser cutting and using a material that's man-made with yeah. what happens with the drawing because drawing is really seeing and seeing is knowing and it's it's drawing really it, it, it really is about this intimate connection to the world and, mm -hmm. and, and seeing the world through a series of I mean, it's tactile obviously it's about mark but the thing about the drawing that's a little interesting and 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 I took I wanted to take even though there's this mechanical process involved mm -hmm. I still while I'm working regardless of whether I'm making my drawings or my paintings or my collages it's it's I'm most I'm most interested in what I don't know so I'll, sure. although the drawings, because the drawing tool is very factual in a way, like I think we think differently with different tools. And my drawings do look closer to all of my work is in, made in response to the natural world yeah. or the tangible world. But I take very direct, intuitive, improvisational approach. Um, so even though the drawings are, I think when you look at the drawings, you're, you're more keyed into what I'm looking at. I think it's m maybe more apparent. I still... I need to have that playful experimental attitude. So anyway, three quarter, long story <laughs> to explain that three quarters of the drawing on the right is a pretty logical angular view into the city with right. the, the, the space coming and going. Mm -hmm. And it, it's funny because it's built, there's a logic and an illogic, but it, somehow it, it feels like a believable view, city it view. It feels it very does. urban city. It's quite good. If you look at the, the second part, which is like the, the left um, one quarter, I'd say, um, I actually inverted another drawing. I took two drawings and I, I, I spliced them together and I superimposed them. So there's this or, disorienting kind of up and down and like upside down, right side up. And it, okay. I took a very playful attitude, even though I was translating this song. Of course, I had to convince, you know, everybody was like, we're well, going to do what here? And But I like it that it's like, it's not always what you expect. Oh, you know, I'm sure. When you're looking at a piece. Did, and you, in, did you actually ever have experience with vinyl? Have you ever seen this This was the first time, no. So you in invented this? Ex well, I don't in know that way. I invented it. I think it's a material that many artists, you know, I mean, I think it, it was something I always wanted to try. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly what incited that interest. But um, but this was the, another amazing, I mean, here, it, I think the, the idea of being given a space, um, Kathy Gibson um, at the gallery and Jose Gelatz, um, who are both with HCC, they're very open to my experimenting and using the gallery as a project space and allowing me to experiment. And, and so I thought, I mean, they were very you know, open to that, which is wonderful to have that opportunity as an artist. And I think also HCC is an educational venue. It's a college, so it's great for Absolutely. students to see that regardless of the fact that you're, you, know, you have this ongoing practice and you're working and you're engaged in your work and that you're continuing to experiment and explore and try. Sure. You don't know. I had no idea if it would work, you know, but I thought I could pull it off. And it right. was well, a really did. great adventure. It's exactly what uh, Graphic Studio is doing. Exactly. Uh, yeah. that Which for is, research. It's exactly. Research. There's something really so valuable for an for I guess you know all artists to be given this the chance to experiment because whatever happens say I'm experimenting with vinyl or in this case I also made a video I'd never shown a video or made you know it, it all was part of the show I was I guess I was really trying to expand the the range of or, or, or to expand and our attitudes about what drawing might be drawing as yeah. many things you know and um, I, I'm sure it is but you know uh, well I may not have seen the entire range of, of drawing but Drawing to me looks intimate. It, it's the close-up feeling, and uh, and I, I think I told you uh, before the show that when I saw New York as you saw it, uh, it, its density and and sometimes its imperviousness, there is also a, like a delicacy there too, and you begin s slowly through ink begin to see the small things and that's what I love about the fact that you can you are constantly going 
and testing each avenue. Well, and the city can be completely overwhelming, but it, it's it's to me it's 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 not, it's not any one thing. The city mm. is is it's it, I think one thing I, I I I often think about is how you know just on a day to day, being in in. New York City or another city, I think yeah. Chicago does it too, but it, you're, you're thrown into situations that you, you, you don't always, you're always questioning what you think you know and what you don't know, yes. and it's always, it's always, um, and that's what I, I think when I'm, when I'm making these drawings too, I try to keep it as um, concentrated and uh, of the moment as possible. Mm -hmm. When I, I mean, there's an intensity of looking and, and connecting. And so when I'm making these drawings, I'm trying to keep the mark as alive and of the moment too. Because it's also about mark making, but sometimes when you're drawing, you might get into the system of um, of, of of a method where you kind of know your mark, or you can sometimes you know you got into rote mode. You're like, okay, I'm doing. And I try to move on the uh, move around on the page, so that I keep mm -hmm. it as intense and as of the moment, so you don't know what you're going to get. Um, in this, in, you never know what you're going to get in the city, and, or That's right. you know, it's just you don't Absolutely. you don't know that not knowing. And and I I need as an artist, regardless of if I'm working on my drawings. Um, or my paintings or my collages, I need to, to step off the path and get mm -hmm. really lost. And, and I think that, um, in a way, you're wandering and traveling when you're making a drawing or a painting or a collage. You know, you're, the, the way I approach it is I'm, I'm, there's a flow happening. And, uh -huh. I, and I, don't know, I don't know, you know, I, I start here and I might come out there. And I don't know where I'm going to, where, where one yeah. thing leads. To, I don't know yet. And that not knowing is really important for me. If I know, then I, I, it doesn't sustain me. I need to get shaken up when I'm working. And the city yeah. does that. It shakes me up. <laughs> it shakes a lot <laughs> of people. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like some authors who, when they start to write, at some point in their novel or whatever, it takes over. The characters take over, and they go, exactly. and he just follows, or she just yeah. follows, which is an interesting yeah. thing. How many how many works are there? Because there are both larger works and smaller works. Um, in the main gallery, I'm showing, I, th I think I'm showing 18 drawings, mm -hmm. and then there's a large vinyl drawing, and then a, the video. Mm -hmm. But right outside the gallery, I'm also showing a series of my travel watercolors. Recently, yes. I reactivated my watercolor practice, and um, the pieces I'm showing were made in in, uh, in Catechez, Spain, right outside the um, Bar right outside Bar Barcelona, and mm -hmm. in Italy, and they're small scale for the most part. But all of the work is made on site. For me, my early work um, was um, I, I worked more um, based on an internal kind of landscape. I worked based on it. my my works for many for I guess the first years of my practice were based on invention. Um, but now, but but now I realize that uh, that my visual vocabulary is much richer, and and I have I, I, I need something to bounce off of. So I, I all of my works are based on observation. I use the natural world as a starting point, I, as a bouncing off point. Um, but I, I I don't feel like they're really about even the drawings, which are closer to I guess you know when you look at the drawings, you're closer yeah. to the city perhaps if the city yes. is my subject, or to the interior. When I made some of the drawings I had made at Yaddo were drawn from the rooms of the mansion. Um, but I, I, I use the natural world as a jumping off point. I think of them as extrapolations. I'm not really interested in the appearance of the place, but more of the heartbeat and the buzz. Like even in the city, I'm not really interested in the appearance of, of, of the city, but more the sensation of the That's city right. and the experience of the city and that sense of, of impact and the power of place. And so, but the work always teeters between more, you know, less representational, more abstract, right. more representational. You know, back the work always kind of fluctuates in terms right. of. Now you have um, two shows coming up. I do in different um, venues. Um, I'm in different in, mediums. In February of 2013, which is just yes, around the corner. That's right. <laughs> I'll be showing um, at Catherine Markell um, Fine Arts in, in New York. I'll be showing put together a new body of work. I'll be showing paintings, oil paintings, mm -hmm. and then at Dowling College um, in New York as well, I'll be showing collage. <laughs> I'm going to be locked in my studio I for bet. the next bunch of months preparing. Well, when you, when you graduated, you first graduated, um, did you plot out uh, in your mind how, where you would be, what path you would take, or did you begin to uh, perhaps apply for grants that would take you to various venues and teachers perhaps that uh, could aid in uh, your development? Um, things, How did it work? things happen happen always, I feel, or, organically, but you have to be kind of receptive to possibilities or opportunities. I've always found that exchanging information with other artists and really like keeping your eyes and you know ears open, you learn about situations and they sound appealing and you, you pursue them. Um, 
uh, when I was 12, I went to New York for the first time. And the city <laughs> grabbed something about the city grabbed hold. And I knew that that, and actually when I, while I was at USF, we had a spring semester in New York City, and I, I participated three times. So the city then was my classroom, and I, I got, you know, I, I, I felt like something about that flow and the intensity of place grabbed hold. Um, but, but, and then along the way, um, you know, I did right after graduate school. I went to the first College Art Association conference, and I, you know, found my first summer teaching job up at Chautauqua. And then you, you it's just, I, I find that it's all, like, it all adds up. Every experience, every, every conversation that you have plants a seed for the mm -hmm. next possibility. And, um, and, and grants are, and, you know, travel residencies are wonderful ways to explore and have, like, when you're, at a residency, you're having dinner every night with a composer, a writer, another visual right. artist. You're learn, you're you're exchanging information and, and and realizing how many, you know, and you might be in this country or you might be across somewhere else the globe, right. and you realize that there there are things we have in common and things that are very different, and it's just mm -hmm. it makes life really rich. And it's I think I am you know it's like to travel is to. To, to, to gather experience and to move through the world. And I am a gatherer. And, you know, like I collect materials <laughs> for my collages. And Hunter and it's gatherer. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and it's like this, like, you know, you, can't, you, you, you never know. It's yeah. like the not knowing. And right. I think that it's sense of adventure. And when I was in school, everyone teased me and they told me my bags were always packed. And I think, you know, they were right because it's, it's, not a bad, it's not a bad place to be in, always packed and ready to go. Um, do, you ha do you recall? Um, several of your, the, either the grants or the residencies or the exhibitions that you think of as really significant and, or, and maybe expanding in a way that maybe you didn't anticipate when you, when you started on them. I have to say every experience, every opportunity yeah. has been really valuable. And you don't always know. You really yeah. don't know. No, I know. Um, um, yeah, and looking backwards, not, you may be able to say this was this was a good thing I did. And rec I think, but I have to say, I think every single residency I've been to or, mm -hmm. or place I've traveled to has, has, has been a part of this flow. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this is like this move fluid traveling through. I've not had a, a single opportunity or, you know, situation or gone someplace and it's just really, I felt like, oh, this was just not worth it. Um, sometimes you don't know what it'll be. You might be thrown into a situation. You might be like, it, and it happens it's, it, it, because when you're working, it, it used to be I could show up and I could unpack my bags and I was in it. I would just I, take, it was more, I think in the past my work was more a continuation mm -hmm. of like, you know, whatever I was doing in my studio, if I showed up at, um, you know, the new residency, I would just keep working. But now it's because it's very much about place. I'm in a different place. It's a different, it's different. I need to connect to that place. So sometimes, yeah, I might be two months in, at, in Ireland, you know, my first trip to, um, to Ballinglen Arts Foundation. The first month is bumpy. You're loving being there and you're interested in conversations you're having and you're loving the landscape, this otherworldly yes. magic of place. Yes. And you're working along, but you know that, um, I mean, I grade my paintings. <laughs> I give myself a B and that's not acceptable. <laughs> I need to make A's. So, right. so, you know, I'm working and working and working and I just know that thing, it's not going, it's not yet. I haven't connected fully mm -hmm. yet. And so it's kind of frustrating too, but I'm in this amazing place and it's valuable. And then something happens and you turn a corner and then you got it and you have something and literally every, yeah, I, I really can't, I, I, I think with yeah, equal importance, every right. situation has been important and it all adds up. That's, I guess I mm -hmm. feel like it all adds up. And, and um, when did you, did you take a little, little side trip and make, decide to make pins and things like that, like this? Which is one of your works. I had a summer, my first summer teaching job was up at Chautauqua, yes. which I mentioned. It's upstate New York. Um, mm -hmm. And the art department is, uh, it still is. I actually went back again. I had a, I guess I was there seven years and I went back two summers ago. And not, not much changed, but a lot changed too. It's an interesting place, time warp in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the art department is this quadrangle. And I would always go check out, I was teaching painting. So I'd always walk across the quad to check out my painting students in the evening, you know. Um, and I have to pass the metal studio. Uh -huh. And for some reason, the metal studio became the social hub. And, and everybody hang, would hang out in the metal studio. So I would just stop by there and I'd visit. And at one point, the instructor, she said, Josette, if you're going to hang out in here, you should make something. But of course, I had <laughs> zero, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd never, you know, I had no experience with metal. She says, there's the drill, there's a piece of metal, you know. And so I started just messing around, basically. And, um, and I just, and it, 
know, I took, I heated the metal and I took shears and I started making these little forms and the dance instructor came through and she's like, oh wow, those are interesting. And all of a sudden there was interest in these little pieces and I was fascinated in them. And just kind of as a little side line, it's always been a very side, very, but for a little, for, for a time when I had more, when I had more time to make the, the metal work, mm -hmm. it helped to support my paintings, you know. I bet. But they still, I still really enjoy it. I just don't have as much time. To me they're collage. It's like collage three-dimensionally. You know, and I'm That's putting right. together the ingredients with rivets and, um, and yeah, Water. the kinds of materials are many. I'm using found ingredients, and they do relate to the collage and the collage um, aspect of my work in many ways. Um, but yeah, so it happened by accident basically, and um, I love that those little pieces that go out in the world I'm and, right. and they, they they yeah. No, it's, I know it's, many people have your little pieces, <laughs> and they they really love them because they they are personal, by the way. Um, uh, I have a man and a woman. I have another fish. He's swimming this way. I'm swimming this way. And that's fun. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's nice to know that you can take that little kind of moment to be lighthearted in a way. Exactly. I'm sure you're lighthearted all the time and very positive because it, it must be 90% uh, of, of anyone's success is the ability to look at the, uh, the possibilities and take a chance. I definitely enjoy the process. So, yes. Yes. But you do, I know that. Well, of all the things you've done, you've done most recently is plein air, I remember that. But how long ago was that, about last year or so? Um, well, actually, the first outdoor painting started in, um, it's kind of an interesting story, because I was working for, as my, for, during my entire involvement as a visual artist. I've made collages and I've made paintings. Mm -hmm. And um, until the mid, mid to late 90s, I was working more on this internalized kind of basis. I was thinking of about landscape, but landscape as idea or state of mind. And I was playing off of these, this kind of landscape that was friendly and, and um, familiar, like the backyard, versus this very unfamiliar kind of landscape, more like a jungle or, you know, a, an unknown territory. And I was just, this was my subject, regardless of whether I was making, I was making small oil paintings in the studio, and I was also making collages that combined, you know, layers of fabric and found materials, rubber hosing, vinyl mats, crazy materials, um, but these two bodies of work. Anyway, mid-90s, things changed. Uh, for one, re one reason was, when you've been in your studio for 10 years and you work with mixed materials, everybody gives you supplies. <laughs> I was literally feeling overwhelmed. So right. the first thing was Probably I made this giant studio purge and I donated to Materials for the Arts. I gave away a lot of materials and I, but, but yet I had, a paper, I had paper files and I'd been methodically saving paper for years. I had an image pile, an image bin, mm -hmm. um, postcards I'd saved. I had a pattern file. Sometimes you open a, an envelope and there's a wild, wonderful, you know, spider web inside. And I had a, um, a drawing file, drawings. Anyway, so I started working with that mm -hmm. in my collage. The oil paintings were based on invention. So anyway, that the collage changed, but also the oil paintings changed because I found myself in a fishing village, Cadiz, for the first time in in Spain. My studio overlooked a wall, so that was really the first plein air. But it happened by accident. I I was I was traveling to Spain. I landed in this beautiful fishing village, mm -hmm. um, and I fig I realized I needed to be outside. So I started sitting on a hilltop making paintings, and I realized that being outside really started to influence the work. Oh, I, I should say, though, I'm married to a landscape painter, but it never occurred to me to until <laughs> that trip to make, right. to, in my landscape, my, pain my painting heroes had been folks like Charles Birchfield. I don't know if you saw the wonderful Robert Gober exhibition at the Whitney recently. Birchfield has always been a hero. Arthur Dove. Every summer I visit the, the Farnsworth and check out those dark sea the, this George Bella's dark sea paintings. Um, so, so anyway, after that trip to Spain, where the work was still on that edge between interpretation or intuition, um, teetering back and forth, then I started seeking out locations, and I went to travel to Cambodia and to Ireland. I think in the summer of um, 2000, that trip to Ireland, the, the outdoor work really matured and turned a corner in terms of my connection to place and became something that I do. But, but now, it's like over the last, so that's 12 years ago, you know, I've been traveling and painting, and in my old studio, it was very clear. When I was in, in my studio, I made collage, and then I would travel to make my oil paintings. But about five years ago, I moved into a new space, uh -huh. and I have giant windows, right. and the city comes in. So all of a sudden, I'm making plein air, but I'm looking out the window. So it's snowing outside, and it's, it's winter, and I can make winter paintings. And so, but so recently, new possibility. new possibility. Things Always are really changing right now. Things are changing. Well, that's fantastic, because it sounds like everything you do come across is you know how to use to your advantage well, you and we will be looking it out it, we've had a great conversation and, and I can't believe it's almost over oh, but we will be looking for you uh, at in New York and 
now, of course, in Tampa. Uh, so take advantage of the opportunity to see some lovely work. I love the small landscapes uh, with the washes. It's terrific. And much success. And I, I, I know there'll be success because it is the way, the approach, the artistic approach and the happy, a happy mind and heart, I think, is uh, more than half the battle. Thank you so, so much. That would be great. We'll all follow your. Thank you. And your one last little thing is yes. that the new pieces, they're, they're, they're no, no, no longer exactly plein air. I've been manipulating the landscape now, and I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm participating in the landscape. So things will be changed, and you'll, you'll see there's some, th some uh, new things in the works with okay. the painting. So to be, thank to you. To be next. continued. I, I thank appreciate you it. This so has much. been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been a delight. It's been fun. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Plan to join us again. Bay Community Network is a service of Speak Up Tampa Bay, a 501c3 nonprofit. We rely on contributions from the community to provide this great free speech venue. Please consider donating through our website at www.tbcn.org or send contributions to TBCN, P.O. Box 4177, Tampa 33677.